number seven then from paper one of the 2021 National Five resource paper. Three marks, simultaneous equations. Solve algebraically. So no guessing numbers, just till you find ones that work. Solve algebraically this system of equations. Well, there are, strictly speaking, there's two ways you could do that. You could take this one of these equations and rearrange it to read either C equals or D equals and substitute that into the other one. But that would involve fractions, that'd be too messy. No, in a case like this, the best thing to do is to multiply the equations up until you end up with the same coefficients of either C or D. So, I'll give them names, one and two. Well, the obvious one to go for would be D because the num not only are the numbers smaller, but they've got opposite signs. So I can just multiply them and then when I add them, they'll just disappear. Rather than going for C, where I'd have bigger numbers and I'd have to subtract them to make them disappear. So that's my plan then. So my plan, I'll put my plan over here. You don't probably do this. My plan is I'm going to eliminate D. And the way I'm going to eliminate D, so I'm continuing with my plan here is, I'm going to do three of them and two of them. That way I'll get a plus six and a minus six and D will go, I've eliminated them. So everything here gets multiplied by three. 15C, 6D, 12. Everything here gets multiplied by 2. 8C minus 6D, that was the plan, and 34. Now that scaling gets the first mark, knowing to scale them up, multiply your equations up. Now all I need to do here is add them together. So I'm just going to take the 1 and add on the 2, but I'll put dash because I've altered them. I've done 3 of 1 and 2 of 2. Well, the whole plan was they've disappeared. So I've got 23 of C is equal to 46. That's nice because that's double it, which means C is equal to 2. So straight away, there's the next mark. Now to find the last one, to get D, I just go back and put that C in. I put C equal 2 into whichever of those look easier. It would be this one because I've got a nice wee plus there. So I'll put it in number 1. So if I put that in number 1, number 1 now reads... Five lots of the two, or I could have gone straight in with ten, plus two D is equal to four. So two D will be, I'll just put it down, take the ten across and subtract. Of course, I could have just jumped straight to the answer, that's negative six. So D is negative three. There we go. And in the exam itself, of course, you can always use, I used equation one to check that answer, or to get that answer rather. So I could use equation two to check if that's correct because those numbers are meant to work for both of them. That would have to work for number one because I used number one to get that answer. But what about number two? If I took number two as a little test, that says, is four times two minus three times negative three? Is that equal to 17? Well, what does that come to? Well, that's eight plus 9, which is 17, so it did work. So that's just like a little check. Now, the alternative would have been to multiply, to get rid of the Cs, to do 4 times equation 1, and then 5 times equation 2. But that'd be a lot worse. Well, it was not much worse, but it'd be, the arithmetic would just be that little bit bigger, plus you'd have to do a subtraction. So in number eight, it says, determine the nature of the roots of this function here for two marks. Well, it's a quadratic. So the discriminant will tell you, which means in this case, we'll want the discriminant. So you want b squared minus 4ac, where the a, the b, and the c are the coefficients of the x squared, the x, and the number. You can always put a wee note at the side. So a is the coefficient of x squared, that's one. B is the coefficient of X, that's 4, and C is the number on its own, so that's negative 7. So if you put it into this, this will tell you what kind of answers to expect if that was the equation equal to 0. So B squared, so that's 4 squared take away 4 times 1 times negative 7. So that's a 16 plus a 28, which is a 44. Now getting the 44 is one mark. Now you have to interpret the answer. So what are the roots? So what can you say about the roots of this? 
what that tells you is that's the part that if that was the equation equal to zero, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of this thing all over 2a. All depends what goes in there. If there's a zero going in there, you only got one answer because plus zero and minus zero are the same thing. If it's a number greater than zero, you're going to get two answers and they'll be real. If it's less than zero, you get no answers because there would be imaginary numbers. You'd say there's no real roots. But you can go further. If that number's a perfect square, you'll have an integer over an integer. You'll have a rational answer. And if that number's not a perfect square like it is here, you'll have an irrational answer. In the marking scheme, it just says, well, since that's this, well, the answer, what you put down is here. You'd say 44 is greater than zero. So that means that you've got, it means you've got answers. It means you've got two answers. So you'd say you've got two real distinct roots. The two and the distinct because they'll be separate from each other because it's plus root 44 and minus root 44. Distinct roots. But you could have gone further and said they're irrational because it's not a perfect square, but there was no mark for that. So two real distinct roots. Number nine then, for three marks, there's that one where you get an expression involving the sums and so on of various square roots, sods, the sods question, and you have to simplify it. Now usually what that means is there's a common one to all of them, so your final answer just involves one square root. Now, here it just says in its simplest form, but there's a 45, so you know that this isn't going to work along with that. So you just have to see what's happening here because you can still simplify them because I can't simplify that, but I can simplify this because lurking inside of that, I'll just show the working, there's a perfect square, 25. That's 25 times two. Well, that can go with that. What about this one? Well, in here, there's a nine. Nine's the perfect square that goes in that one. So that's nine fives are 45. And of course, it can't get any simpler than root two. So this one becomes root 25 times root 2, so that's 5 root 2. This one becomes root 9 root 5, so that's 3 root 5. Minus root 2. Now, they're both root 2s, so they can go together. So you've got 5 of root 2, take away 1 of root 2, is 4 lots of root 2, and quite separately, there's 3 lots of root 5, and that's the best you can do. So that's the simplified expression. Now, the marks were... There was one mark for taking this one from root 50 to 5 root 2, which you could have written straight away. There was one mark for taking root 45 and going to 3 root 5 by extracting that root 9, which you could have got done straight away. Of course, there wasn't anything there because all you're doing is copying it. And then the final one was for tidying it up by combining these two terms.